And with the pen complete, it's time at long last to announce the name of my pet qualifant, which is... What? You didn't really think I'd do it right at the beginning, did you? Hey there! My name is Salandrak, and welcome back to another episode of my Wagstaff Reign of Giants playthrough series. In today's episode, we're finishing off our first full year and heading back into fall. We'll have a moment of extremely good luck, and we'll finally track down... Aunt Velma? Be sure to stick around for the full episode as towards the end the final winning name for the pet qualifant will be announced, promise! And as always, if you like this type of content, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to help ensure that my pet qualifant doesn't suffer any sort of unfortunate accident. Now let's get started! When we left off last time, we had just almost died to the dragonfly, but barely managed to down the giant before she downed us. Back at my base, I munch on a pierogi to boost my health, then a couple of cooked cactus gets my sanity back up to top form. And just like that, we've recovered from the boss fight. Summer is winding down, but it's still hot enough outside for wildfires, so I make sure to keep my ice flingomatic fueled up. Then, after shifting some inventory around, I head back to the scene of the battle to reclaim my stuff. Looks like all my drumsticks and small meats are still here, as well as my flower shirt, various weapons and armor, and... Of course, Chester's eye bone. May he rest in peace. Flower shirt goes back on to keep me cool, though its durability is about to expire. But I'm close enough to the end of summer that the chilled thermal stone should be sufficient to stave off the heat until fall arrives with cooler temperatures. There's too much stuff to carry back myself, so with the eye bone on my cursor, I return to base. I get a couple of hound mound puppies after me, but decide to just keep going and they lose interest. At base, I put the foods away, then use my remaining flowers to make a salad to finish topping up my health. There's not much else to do right now, so I go ahead and chop the nearby trees during the night, and when morning arrives, Chester is back. When juggling my inventory before the dragonfly fight, I dropped my cut grass on the ground, which got burned. So I grab my backup stores from the chest, then head to get the rest of my things back. Not sure why I kept the axe and shovel with me though, but Chester has plenty of room for the rest of the gear, and then it's back to base again. While heading back, my flower shirt finally falls off, and since I forgot my thermal stone, my temp starts to climb at a rate of 1 degree per second, just as it does in winter with no insulation. I'm taking damage before I get back to base, but soon enough I'm home and cool off by the endothermic fire. Just after dusk, I decide to go kill some volt goats. I don't really need the meat, but would like to get a horn at some point so I can make a morning star or weather pane. No luck from these two, but then I hit a spider that was eyeing my meat, but decide there's more than I want to deal with right now. Huh, looks like the lure plant killed a goat too. The next morning it's day 70 and I head up to clear out the spider dens. My ham bat is spoiled enough that it takes 3 hits per spider, but that's fine. Soon the first den is down and I start on the second, but I'm interrupted by baying hounds and hurry down to my tooth traps, where I drop an endothermic fire for cool temps during the fight. The traps thin them enough that I'm able to down the rest without taking any damage, very nice. After resetting all the traps and gathering up the loot, I head back up to finish that second spider den. I managed to hit the first trio too close to the nest though and get some spider warriors, but just run away until they reset back in the nest. I'd swapped my tentacle spike for the hounds and forgot to recover the hand bath, so instead of using the spike, I just used my walking cane on the nest. It does half the damage of a spear, so it takes a while, but it has infinite durability, so I don't mind. I take the nest back to base where I'll store it in a chest for next summer. Two more tooth traps get added to the fighting area, then I spend the night managing my food stores and inventory. Day 71 arrives, and per my calendar tracker, I've got one more day of summer after this one to go until fall. Towards the end of summer, the high temperatures are still hot enough to cook you, but generally aren't hot enough to start wildfires, so I start making preparations to return to my regular base. Which also means I can start wearing a backpack again, yay! I gather up all the food except for a 35 stack of ice that I'll just leave here, refuel the ice fling matic and make sure it's turned off, then start heading home. At base, I load up the drying racks with big meat, then store the foods in the ice boxes. I go ahead and turn my scale from the dragonfly into a scaled chest, the only other option in single player Don't Starve is the scale mail, which isn't really good as far as armor goes. But the chest is a 12 slot storage that is also fireproof. I'm not sure where I want to put it though, so I just leave it in limbo for now. Since I don't have an endothermic fire pit at this base, I go ahead and make an endothermic campfire for the night, then put my thermal stone in the icebox to get it extra chilled if needed the next day. 
Then I spend the rest of night sorting inventory and playing Whack-A-Mole Worm, which is always a favorite pastime. Morning arrives and it's the last day of summer. It's warm enough outside that I'll start overheating, but not quite hot enough to make me take damage. But I grab my thermal stone to be on the safe side and avoid the warning haze, then head over to check on my bee boxes and use my thumper to harvest my trees. Oh hey, looks like this activity has finally spawned a tree guard. Just a little guy though, and apparently he doesn't care to get revenge on me or my mechanical contraption. My tentacle spike was pretty low durability, so I run back to base to grab a fresh one as well as a visor, then me and a local pig start to work on the tree guard. He goes down pretty fast, then I continue uprooting the stumps and gather all the wood. Most of those trees weren't fully grown, so I didn't get many pine cones to replant, but after replanting what I had, I decide to follow a suspicious tracks near the thumper. It leads me to the northeast through the trees, then off into the deciduous forest. Just another qualifant though, and as I don't need more meat right now, I just let him stay, grabbing green mushrooms while heading home. Once back, I go ahead and reconstruct my main base telepad. Now if only I can figure out how to get Chester to stick with me when using it and I'll be set. I then cook up my green caps to top up my sanity and soon it's day 73, autumn once again, and we've survived our first year in this world. Go us! It's been a while, but the time has come at last to visit our pet Koalifant. I've had some polls running on the channel's community page to pick a name for the little guy, and once we finish his pen, I'll announce the winning name of the 15 or so viewer suggestions. For now, I just pick up the poop and then head over to harvest my honey. All of the boxes are full, and in a matter of about 30 seconds, I've got 36 honey, which provides enough food points to feed me for just over two days. And as an added bonus, harvesting the honey early in the day forces all of the bees out of the hives at once, so they get to work right away. Win-win. Though at some point, I should probably start eating the stuff. I need to go demolish the telepad at the summer base and decide to also swing by the wooden circle thing to place all of the pieces of the teleportado. So I gather each of the components out of my chest, then grab the circle thing which is still resting below base. I remember that I had left a hammer by the savanna wormhole at the beginning of summer, so I head down there, then warp over to the desert. At the summer base, I grab the last batch of jerky, smash the desert telepad, then go ahead and use the parts to prefab a new one for future placement. Then I head up to the chessboard and assemble the teleportado while observing Wagstaff's observations during the process. This device can be used to travel to a new world, basically it just regenerates the world map, allowing you to take your inventory and any pre-crafted structures with you. It also triggers the realization of experience without dying and lets you choose another character if you want to, which is nice if you're itching to unlock new characters but don't want to kill anyone off. It's a one-way trip though, and as I don't want to destroy this world, yet, I take care to hit the stay here button. It's a full moon and I've decided to kill Glomer so I can make an old bell and warp back to base, leaving Chester behind once again. Glomer goes down without a fight, but killing the innocent little guy sets you up maximum naughtiness and guarantee spawns a Krampus attack. But since it's nighttime, they fall asleep right away, allowing me to gank the first one easily. I tank the second one, and before I can pick up the loot, a third one comes up from below. But once he's down, I start picking up the loot and... Could it be? Did, did I actually get it? Yes! A Krampus sack! Wow! So that's actually amazingly good luck. The Krampus sack is a 14 slot backpack, but it only has a 1% chance to drop from a Krampus. And since you generally don't see Krampus all that often unless you're specifically farming him, to get a sack on the first Krampus attack is really pretty cool. Well, looks like I'll have to figure out alternate ways to stay warm, dry, and cool in the rest of the seasons because this thing is the bomb. Though it does make a bit of a jingling sound when I move. Hopefully that doesn't start to drive me crazy. My jerky stores are doing really well, so I go ahead and eat some to heal up and restore some sanity, and then I make some new goggles to replace the old ones that had almost deteriorated. There's another suspicious dirt pile just above base, so tracking I go. This one meanders down to the savanna, but is again just a qualifant. When am I going to get something fun? I go ahead and kill him though, so I can make more jerky. Then while heading back to base, I dig up any grown grass I find to add to my base farm. It's another full moon tonight, so I head over to Glomer's statue, killing a were pig along the way, more meat and a pig skin too. I then grab the Glomer's flower and mine the statue to get the blueprint for the old bell. I get ambushed by a few more were pigs on the way home, which is fine by me. 
It's day 75 and I go ahead and make the old bell, except I mess up and use the new Glomer's flower instead of the old one. So not sure what that will do to Glomer. Will he just wander off? Does he despawn? Eh, guess we'll find out. I then plant the grass I dug up earlier and just happen to have gotten enough for a perfect row. I need more charcoal to finish my drying racks, so I grab my shovel and axe and head up to the forest. There's a big patch of lumpy trees, which is my preferred source of charcoal. After felling a totally normal tree along the way, I start digging up saplings and making a fire break to preserve the rest of the forest. Except my fire break fails due to something else being on the ground, so I run back the other way to unload the area and stop the fire from spreading too far. Up on the other end I start chopping the burnt trees, but then it turns to night and apparently I don't have my infroggles with me, so I just head back to base using the torch to light my way and playing chicken with Charlie a bit. Hey, looks like Glomer is still buzzing around. I grab some extra grass and then start making my drying racks. Day 76 arrives and the drying racks get placed, finishing my 8 rack setup. Next up I start making a new pair of infroggles, but get interrupted by another hound attack. The tooth traps take out all but two of the hounds, which I put down easily. Lots of my food is less than fresh, so I spend some time cooking stuff over the fire, converting monster eggs into meat, and then finish making those in froggles. Morning arrives and I go ahead and make another dark sword. And then just for fun, use my telebrella right next to the telepad to see if it will coax Chester into rejoining me. Nope. My next task is to make my coalephant pen, but I need more stone and remember I had left a bunch back at the summer base. And since I also need to get Chester back, I run down to the savannah wormhole and find him waiting for me on the other side. At the summer camp, I grab the stone and a few other things, then detour up to the spider infested rocky land to mine some more minerals. I try another Telebrella, warp back to base, and again leave Chester behind. I had some rotten eggs that I brought back from the desert, so I go ahead and craft up a batch of gunpowder. I'll likely use these for pen goal countermeasures during the winter, but might also expand the pile and use it against a future boss, such as another dragonfly or maybe the ancient guardian. Then just before dawn I start crafting the stone walls for the qualifant pen. I decide to put some angled walls coming down from both sides towards the berry patch, above which I'll have a flat section that has a double door gate. Should look rather nice I think. Um, okay, the gate opens from the middle, that's kind of odd. Qualifants are too big to fit through gaps with just one space in the wall, but will make it easy for me to get in and out. The wall placement is finished, so I run over to test it out and fail. So he's too big to fit through one wall gaps if they are along the flat side of the walls, but space from the corners it's apparently wide enough that his fat ass fits through just fine. But apparently it's one way, cause he sure as hell doesn't want to go back up that way, the little twerp. Eventually I get smart and open the gate, and even with the hinge on the middle, I finally get him back in his pen. I then make some more walls to fill in the corner section gaps, retest, and success! And now that he's a properly confined little coalfant pet, I am proud to announce that the name by which he shall be known henceforth and forever shall be... Wumbo, as selected by channel viewers through a recent community poll. Down in the kitchen I've got a full 20 stack of jerky with more on the way, so I decide to make a new care package since the bundling wrap from my last one got burned by the dragonfly. So I get to work making more meatballs for the bundle, killing mole worms between batches. I make a new ham bat, then load it up with 20 jerky, 4 honey poultices, and 8 meatballs. Next up I pick the berries to refill my filler stores, but sadly don't get any gobblers. Then I go get a hammer so I can try and fix the gate of Wumbo's pen. Oh hey, when you smash a gate you get all the ingredients back. Normally when you hammer something you only get half back, good to know. I then recraft the doors and place them, and perfect, hinges that aren't down the middle. There's another dirt pile near base, so off I go tracking. This one also heads up into the forest, which makes finding the next pile sometimes a challenge. The trail ends up near Maxwell's statue, and at long last it isn't a coalephant. Instead, it's a harsh and phlegmatic creature, a Yucus. Alternatively, it might be Wagstaff's Aunt Velma. These things are a pain to fight alone, so I swing through the swamp to get some more reeds, then double back to the wormhole to get my Chester back. Back at base, it's almost morning, but I don't feel like starting a fire, so I just kill some mole worms by in Froggle Vision. 
Then it's day 80 and since it's been raining for a while I decide to craft an umbrella as the moisture is starting to dampen Wagstaff's mood. Unfortunately since his goggles provide no protection from rain, the umbrella alone isn't enough to decrease his wetness. I spend a little time cooking up a round of bacon and eggs and organizing storage and then harvest all my twigs and grass. Just after dusk I head over to the thumper to harvest the fully grown trees. I want to expand my storage chests and otherwise stock up on logs. Then I decide to prototype and sleep on a straw roll to skip to the next day and see if it makes the rains stop. No luck! And I'm now wet enough that it's causing my sanity to go down so I opt for my raincoat. Time to assemble pigs to hunt the Yukus! I won't need the pigs for very long so cooked morsels get used to recruit them and four pigs is plenty for taking the beast down fast. Then we all head up to the chessboard to find our prey. Wagstaff leads the charge wearing just his visor but quickly gets immobilized but then the pigs rush in freeing him from the phlegm and getting some good hits in on Velma er, um, the Yukus. I manage to dodge the next snobball and a few hits later with a tentacle spike and the beast is slain. Not quite as climatic as the dragonfly fight but still pretty fun. I let one of the pigs snack on the snot then decide to see what happens if I use a telebrella with the hunting party. And what the hell? The pigs come back but Chester... <laughs> whatever. Krampusat goes back on then I store the loot. I'll use the steel wool to make a brush for future beefalo taming and then decide to call it a wrap for today. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!